Hey guys, welcome to my latest T-Shock tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to be going over port forwarding, downloading and installing T-Shock, adding and editing groups and permissions, and finally we're going to wrap up with editing the config.json file. So, so first thing we want to start with is port forwarding. So what we need to open up is the command prompt. So in Windows 7, simply type CMD in the search bar. Or in Windows XP, find the run command. Type CMD. And then um, your command prompt should look a lot similar to mine. So the first thing we're going to do is, add, is type in ipconfig forward slash all we're going to hit enter and this is going to show us all of our network adapters that are on the computer so what we're going to do is find the one that we're connected to or connected with and we're going to need two different numbers. First is the IPv4 address, which in this case for this computer is 10.0.0.101. The next number we need is the default gateway, which is 10.0.0.1. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that default gateway number and we're going to go ahead and plug it into our browser. Uh, it doesn't matter what browser you use, just make sure you type it exactly as shown. Mine's 10.0.0.1. Now your your router is going to look a little bit different than mine. I'm using a media link. What you want to do is go through the menu and find the spot where they talk about port forwarding which is also considered port range forwarding which is uh, which is the same um, you can do single or range um, single just means you're gonna have to enter um, enter it into more more than one line but as long as you cover all of the basics you'll be fine and by all the basics I mean your input port okay your output po port the forwarding address and the protocol. Notice that it's port range so it's all in one line so it's kind of convenient. So the first thing you want to enter is 7777 for the input. Same thing for the output. And if you look right here that was the IPv4 address that we were talking about earlier on this page uh, in the command prompt because this is asking where do you want to port forward basically people that are trying to connect to your T-Shock server through these two ports and you're saying connect to this computer okay which happens to be the one we're working on but this is not always the case so just make sure you know whatever computer is that's um, hosting Terraria uh, um, T-Shock server that, that number goes in there. Um, for protocol, make sure you, you do both. Whether you have to do TCP first and then UDP second on different lines, it doesn't matter as long as you cover that they are both being used. See, TCP, UDP. Make sure it's enabled and then go ahead and hit apply. Now I'm going to close this out. So now we're ready. Once we get the server up and going, it's going to go to the right place. So if you go to tshock.co um, and then you go to install, this is where you're going to find the latest version of tshock. I went ahead and downloaded it already. And it comes as a compressed um, RAR or zip file. Um, right click your desktop go to new folder 
I'm just going to name this T-Shock 4.0. Okay, just click and drag the zip file into this new folder. And we're going to open the folder, and there it is. Okay, I'm using WinRAR, which is a free extractor. You can get it online. Right click, extract here. And then when you're done, just go ahead and take it back out and drop it back on your desktop. Now you notice right here, where's my T-Shock folder? Isn't there supposed to be a T-Shock folder in here? And that's right. After you run the server for the very first time, it creates the T-Shock folder. Now I want to show you how to, how to edit this file right here which is your database file, which is where all your users, your inventory, your passwords, um, all of that is stored. Okay. So to edit that, the easiest way I found was to get a Firefox plugin and under web, web developer, after you have it installed, it's called SQLite Manager. Okay. So just Google SQLite Manager for Firefox and you'll find it. So to get into it we go into web developer let's just go ahead and open it and here we have it. Use the open folder icon and I'm gonna go to desktop because that's where I have this sh this folder installed T-Shock 4.0 and then the T-Shock and the SQLite Okay, make sure browse and search is highlighted, not any of these other ones. And you'll notice we have player bands, group list, inventory for the players. Okay, and this is kind of where you you uh, you can see what you've done to your server already. Um, because we have a new one, there's not a whole lot in here. I'm going to show you how to edit this group admin because this is going to be a group that everybody's probably going to want to use so go ahead and right click and click edit and you can rename it I don't recommend renaming this rather than renaming the admin group you should just go ahead and uh, and create a new one okay and I'll show you that in a second but what I want to show you is the commands. This is where the admin gets all of its power. Okay. Teleport here. Immune to kick, kill, logs, player versus player fun. Okay, so these are all permissions that the admin group can do. So when you add a user, one of your friends, and you put them in this group, these are the commands that they're going to have access to. Okay. The next thing people always ask me about is how do you change the chat color for a particular group? Well, as you can see right here, this is the chat color, okay, for this particular group. So all that all those numbers mean is RGB or red, green, blue. So what we did is I just googled a generic RGB color chart and it also has a hexadecimal number which is what we do not want this is more for HTML and CSS no th we want RGB for our SQLite database so you notice it's three numbers one two three separate numbers so if we can just find a color that we like let's say we like this blue color it's zero zero two five five now you notice that there's dashes here and but we didn't see dashes in our in our SQLite database file. Well, so we want to go ahead and just continue the way that they have it, which is with um, decimals. We do not want to do dashes. So 0 0.0.255. See, we have red, green, blue. We have no red, no green, and pure blue. Okay. Now the prefix and the suffix, we're going to go over that later. Um, if you add in a prefix or a suffix, it, it doesn't necessarily um, guarantee it's going to show up when you're, when you're in game. But if you do want it to show up, this is where you actually enter the values for this particular group. Okay, We're going to leave those blank. And
And I do want to also point out that I am going to show you a link to explain exactly what all these are. Hit OK. Are you sure you want to execute this? Color. OK. Hit OK. Actually, I'm going to cancel that really fast. We're going to hit OK. I'm just going to double check this really fast. OK, and everything checks out. So there's the new chat color for the admin group. Now I want to point out that you don't have to save it. Once you make the change and hit OK, this whole database um, is saved. You don't. There's no save function up here. You don't have to save this again. OK, so I'm just going to go ahead and minimize this, get it out of the way. Um, I'm going to minimize this. Actually, I'll come over here and explain to you where to, where to go next, and that is the config file. So, I'm going to give you that link, okay, which exp which shows you the config file, and underneath it, it tells you what everything does and a very basic one one line uh, explanation okay and so we're gonna go over some of these things so what you want to do is open up your T-Shock folder go into T-Shock and the, fo the file we're going to be editing is the config.json so right click it edit with notepad or notepad plus plus in my case don't open it with Microsoft Word you want to make sure that it's just a plain text editor and this indeed is. So you see um, a lot of things that you can edit and change. Um, I do want to point out one thing that the super admin chat is changed here, not in the SQLite file. Okay, this is the config file. Um, this is your prefix for your super admin. Remember, not admin, just super admin. So anyway, they, they just added the super admin um, options into the config file instead, which is no, no big deal. Um, the main thing I want to show, because I've already covered most of these in some of my other videos, um, I just want to show a quick explanation on chat format. Okay. So, zero, group name, group prefix, player name, group suffix, chat message and this is the example that they give um, this is default which means they're going to show a prefix if you put a prefix in the group remember I told you those were optional well if you happen to then they would show up okay if you don't change this this right here is what most people prefer this is what I do on all my servers so what I'm doing is I'm enclosing a bracket around the group name okay so I can name this group whatever I want I, I, um, for my server I, I came up with some pretty clever names um, for example there was like ninjas or wizards or um, gunners whatever okay and that would be the group name that I came up with and it would be enclosed in brackets so it looked a little bit cleaner and then a space and then I added their name right their player name and then a colon and then a space and then whatever the chat message happens to be just make sure you leave it in quotation marks when you're editing the config file and everything will turn out just fine okay and that's this line right here now after you change this just make sure you go ahead and save it Okay, now I'm going to back out to the Terraria server and I'm going to show you the final step that we want to do. So, um, after we get some of the things changed that we liked in our server and we load a world, remember this is the port that we forwarded, so we don't want to change this. We want to leave that default, so I'm going to hit enter. So, when your friends connect, they're going to connect to the right ports to, to join this. So if you look right here, 
it says there's this authentication code, okay, which is exactly what we want. So I went ahead and started Terraria. I'm going to join. If you didn't catch that, I went to multiplayer join. I'm going to join as Daddy-O. And if you don't know um, how to connect to your server, just type in localhost, which is actually this number right here, 127.0.0.1. Okay. And then the port, of course, we left the same. And here we are. So the first thing we want to do, according to the instructions, is to type this authentication code. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to do forward slash A-U-T-H space 4034750. Now this is going to be different for everybody's server, so don't copy my numbers. you got to make sure you look and see what your numbers are. And after that, it gives you this nice little message. But basically, it's telling you that you need to create a super user or a super admin account so you can log into this from now on. So we're going to do forward slash user add. I'm going to do my username, which is Omega. Make sure you do a colon. And then my password, which will be pass space. And then the group. I'm going to be a part of, which is super admin. Okay. Notice that the the server follows along with what's been happening. Okay. You can just read saying that it's authenticated, it's successful. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and log into it. So forward slash login space omega, and I'm going to do a space, not a colon, and my password. Once I'm logged in as super admin, I do forward slash auth dash verify. Okay, and that's that's it. Now that's the only time I'm gonna have to do this. Okay, with this authentication code and creating a super admin account. Okay. <coughs> oh my gosh, I feel sick. 